Hey guys and welcome back to another Take Inter video. In this video, we'll take a look at the top level widget. So what is the top level widget? Well, when you're creating GUI applications, you often feel the need to create more than just one GUI window. Like maybe you want to create a settings page or maybe you want to create a new window where there's a form presented to the user. I mean, there are all kinds of reasons why you might want more than one window. So the proper way of doing this, the prop proper way of creating more than one uh, window in Tickinter is by using the top level widget. Some people uh, who, do who don't know about this, they just use, they create another, another Tickinter instance, which is actually the wrong way of doing it. Because think of it this way, uh, the Tickinter instance represents your GUI application, all right? Uh, not just your main window. So uh, basically what you want is to have only one taken to instance because you only have one program, right? If both of them were two entirely separate programs, then it would make sense to create two taken to instances. But uh, the top top level widget doesn't create a new a new taken to instance. It just attaches itself to the previous taken to instance. I'll show you more about this. I'll explain this more as we proceed. If you've been following our previous videos, you can see I've also changed the name of this class to main window because uh, once we create the new top level uh, widget, the two new window, I'm gonna create a new class for that, all right? But uh, more on that, we've been talking too long. So let's begin. I'm gonna create a button here. Basically, we click on this button and the new window should pop up, all right? That is the goal. Settings window, all right? And let's give it a command something like C1, I'm just gonna go with short names, all right? C, C1 for command one, all right? Let's put this somewhere here, all right? All right, now, uh, before we proceed, I actually want to create that new class I was talking about, all right? So we'll call it settings window. Again, you can do this in a non-class approach as well, but I highly recommend you follow the class-based approach. All right. Now, this is where we create the top-level widget. Again, you can do this in a different way, but just uh, if you just follow what, what I'm doing here, uh, you won't face any problems, all right? So yeah, just create this, the top-level. This is the top-level widget, basically. Self.win is similar to basically root over here. You can use almost the same function on it. You can use the destroy function on it. You can use resizable on it, all right? Uh, you can use main loop on it to actually execute it, all right? Uh, basically, the, what we're gonna do is basically create the class in the C1 function, all right? And because this is in, because this is in the init function, the initialization function, it'll run immediately and create the window, all right? So let's just call this self.settings. Now this is useful because we can access the settings window from within the main class then, all right? So this is, this is why I'm creating the settings window from within the main window so that we can still interact with it. And we will need to. So yeah, settings window, all right? This will create our window. Now we still have one thing to do, which is to self.settings.win, all right? to access this, and then we have to call main loop on it. Uh, this is something you, ha you have to do, because it's like, just like over here, right? We created the take inter instance and you know, ran main loop on it. So you need to use main loop over here as well, all right? Let's just run this now and see what happens. All right, settings window. Okay, here's our window. Well, it's, by default, it seems to have taken the size of our current window. So let's actually go around customizing it, all right? I'm gonna include a frame in here. TK.frame. Self.win, sorry. I'm gonna use pack over here, all right? Again, totally up to you. So let's make a label to make this a little more self-explanatory, self.frame, text, this is the settings window, all right, 
and let's pack this in. Now, typic typically, um, in here, you would expect to have uh, something like uh, some options, right? Like either some uh, buttons or like typically you have a check buttons and in ready buttons, right? You can either select some options or not. Again, I'm just trying to uh, create a realistic settings window. That's it. I'm just going to create this ready button real quick. Option one. All right. No need to actually uh, properly make this. Just just make the visual the visual look. All right. Unless of course you're actually making your application. Okay, just copy paste this real quick. Okay, and we are done. Let's run this. Let me click on this and here we go. Here's our settings window. I think it looks pretty nice as well. You can actually see like um, uh, option one and option two can, can actually be something. Can, they can actually be some realistic options. You can click on one of them, then uh, create a button over here called submit, which uh, calls a function that returns to the main window uh, some uh, data or stores the data in the settings window from which we can then access it from the main window. So you can see here already what our you know, hierarchy looks like. We have our settings window here and the main window here. All right, so there's one thing I want to you know, uh, briefly tell you. Um, you see, because the top level widget it, it has not created a separate take into instance, uh, closing the main window will close the settings window because there's only one take into instance, all right? And the main window represents the main uh, main GUI application. It, it, re it represents root. So you close the main window and the settings window will close. Now, let me just show you this. We can close the settings window here and uh, the main window is perfectly fine. Let me just make that again, all right? Now, I close the main window and both of them will close. There, you see? And this is why we create only one take into instance, all right? Because if you created two, then uh, the settings window would, would be its own, uh, you know, its own GUI program. And because uh, if you notice that when you're using a program, any, any, any GUI software, you close the main window and the supporting windows will close as well, right? So in, in order to ensure this functionality, we create only one take into instance and use the top level widget, all right? So I think this is the core functionality then. So let's discuss some customization options. And uh, there are actually some pretty interesting ones. All right, I'm gonna create a, uh, something here called flag, all right? What does this do? I'll get to that in a minute. And when we call uh, our settings window, I want to set this flag to one, all right? Now, you may already have guessed it, but this is going to represent the state of our settings, of our settings window. If our settings window is not active, we'll, we'll keep this zero. And if it's on, as in it's uh, visible, we'll set it to one, all right? And this new one here, I'm gonna call it min max settings, all right? Let's put this width lower. Let's make one called C2. And let's just change the names. Actually, it doesn't make a difference, that much of a difference anyway. You can actually have the same names here and it'll still work, but it's better to keep them unique. Let me create this new function, all right? Now, we still haven't reached the customization part, all right? So just to hold on. So if self.flag is equal to one, actually let's leave this empty. I want to make the other one first, all right? If self.flag is equal to zero. So what am I doing here? Well, you can see I want to basically uh, create a way to minimize it and maximize the settings window. You don't always want to uh, just close the settings window. Maybe you're making some changes in it, all right? Uh, because, uh, well, maybe you just don't want to delete it, all right? So maybe you just want to hide it away temporarily using the uh, min, you know, minimize feature. Uh, and we can do this from the main window. We don't have to 
uh, call, we don't, we don't have to press that minimize the button on the top level widget, on the top level window. All right, so you can use the withdraw and uh, de-iconify functions to actually achieve this. So basically here I mentioned that if flag is zero, that represents uh, that the window is currently not showing and if flag is, is equal to one represents that the window is showing. So if the window is showing, I'm gonna call the, uh, and this is a bit complicated, all right? Self.settings to access this, all right? This object that we created, and then self, and then dot win to access the top level widget, all right? And then we add the, then we you know, actually use the function. So withdraw. So in short, if the window is active, withdraw it, all right? And if the window is not active, then I want you to display it. Let's run this. Okay, there we go. We create our window here. And let me minimize it now. There, it's gone. Okay, a slight mistake here. It's not showing up. Oh, right, of course. Um, I, once I minimized it, I need to actually uh, set this back to zero, all right? Basically, to tell it that it has been minimized. And same thing here. If I show it, I need to set flag back to one to represent the fact that uh, it is now showing. Settings window. And there you go. It's minimizing and maximizing perfectly fine. Let me just try something out. Okay, as I have the option one selected here, all right, I'm gonna minimize it and maximize it. And as you can see, option one is still selected. So basically, uh, we didn't lose the changes we made to the settings window. This is just one benefit I can think of when it comes to you know minimizing or maximizing or just destroying the window, then recreating it later, all right? And with this, I think we've properly covered the top level widget, as well as its uh, various customizations and how to actually use it. There are obviously more functions and more options that you can actually use with it. Uh, I mean, there are like uh, so many of them, it's actually impossible to actually cover them in a single video. So uh, I'll include a link to, the, uh, web to our website. And over there, this is actually a complete list of different functions and options you can use, all right, uh, in the d description below. So this is the end of this video. If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you in the next video.